Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, time for the grade two John C. Maybe stakes preview. It's at Del Mar on Saturday. It's race number seven, and it kicks off the 50 cent late pick four. This race for Phillies and Mares going a mile and an eighth on the turf. You could, of course, bet the Del Mar card with a DRF bets account. But remember that the stakes action begins August 30th through September the 2nd on All American Weekend at Rui Doso Downs, featuring the world's richest quarter horse race, the All American futurity wager with drf bets let's meet the field for the john c maybe stakes it is a big field there are some nice horses and vasilik has just been great for jerry hollendorfer since being claimed for forty thousand dollars we remember her she was okay in new york nothing special she's turned into a monster in southern california she's won 13 of her last 16 mike it's it's a remarkable to turn around in her career since she's gotten out there um, you know, it's almost uh, shocking when she loses in these races now, which she did last time in the yellow ribbon. Uh, she just bumped into a razor sharp bow recall and, and um, couldn't get there at the end of the race, but she ran well again. And yeah, we'll watch that race right now. And remember, this is Vasilika's first start since May. She's the number four in the big white blinkers. To her outside is Ellie Z's World, who's also back in here. Vasilika is kind of plugged along, and I wonder if she was just a little bit short this time around. She could work out a trip from the rail. Yeah, she can get a good trip in this race. I agree with you. I feel like there's a chance she just takes a step forward here. Not that she really needs to take a big one. You know, her typical effort is going to make her a major player in this race. Number two is Paved, and she did some really good things as a three-year-old for trainer Michael McCarthy. Second in the Rodeo Drive, she made Vasilika run that day. She won the El Camino Real Derby against the boys early in the season. Her most recent start was her first race, oh, in about six and a half months, and I think she needed it. Let's watch it right now. It's the Osanita Stakes, and Ahimsa, who also is in this race, she's down on the rail with the lead. In behind is Paved. Paved trugs, uh, trudges along pretty nicely for third. Third, and I think she gets a lot out of that effort. I do too. I think she actually ran really well in this race, um, mostly because it was just such a nice, easy pace early in there. Uh, Ahimsa just had all the best of it right up there with it, and Pave had to make an early move just to get close, and then she kept going through the stretch. I, I like her. I think there's a chance she really takes a step forward again. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. The 6, the 8, the 7, the 5. Those horses expected to be pushing what time form U.S. projects to be a fast pace. Now, the 3, La Force, is near the back of the pack. She would benefit from some pace, and she began her career on turf. and was kind of a middling turf horse for Patty Gallagher. She got good on the dirt, multiple grade one placed. It's just that it seemed every time she showed up on the racetrack, she'd be running against the faults, the unique Bellas, the Monomoy girls, the Vale Dories. I kind of like her better on dirt. I like her better on dirt too, but maybe, you know, maybe she'll take her recent improvement and bring it back to the turf. It's not like she's a terrible turf horse. We see uh, the five, Ahimsa, sitting just off the pace. We saw her most recent race on the lead. That's how fast this pace could be, and it could set up for Toynette. Now, we talked about the good things Paved did as a three-year-old. You could argue Toynette was even better. She won the Edgewood at Churchill Downs very nicely uh, over a rushing fall. She got the best trip that day. The last run was the best run. She got hurt in the Belmont Oaks, draw a line through that race. I loved her autumn miss, Mike, to finish off her three-year-old campaign. It was the best I ever see, uh, saw her. And Neil Drysdale took her time. He took his time with this filly. Came back in, the, in an optional claiming race, and here she is in the pink. She just cruised up on the far turn, and the race is over. Yeah, another race that had a, a rated pace. Um, she just sat on the outside as the field raced in a tight pack, and I, I like the way that she took over and won off in the stretch. I, she has a lot of talent, Dan. I think she's I think she's going to be very hard to beat in this race. She ran a 96 buyer in her final start at three. In that tune-up, she ran a 90. Something tells me there's a forward move coming. I agree with you. This is a very intriguing runner. Getting back to Ahimsa real quick, she set that rated pace in the Osanitas. She held off not only paved, but a cheer and some good horses. And when you give her an easy lead, she's dangerous to beat. But the longer they go, I get a little bit concerned. I wonder about the mile and an eighth. I do, too. The pace scenario is a little different for her, too. She has grade one place at this distance, but she's got to improve. Do you think Epidemia's girl can make the lead? Time for U.S. believes she can. I think himza has got to go. If I'm Brees Blanc, I send himza I know I'm effective on the lead, and I make Epidemia's girl take a seat. Epidemia's girl last time out was forced to take a seat in the Osanitas, and she backed up very badly behind himza Maybe Fuentes is going to say, forget this, I want the front. 
Yeah, they might have to go back to those front-running tactics after that last one. She was terrible without the lead last time. I don't think that she's a huge player, even if she makes the front anyway. Let's talk about Juliet Foxtrot, and I've been tweeting about her because I was so impressed with everything she's done in North America from her first three lifetime starts. Let's go to her North American debut back at the Keeneland Spring Meet. Here she is on the outside under Florence Giroux, and this is just easy. I mean, it looks like there's a, a pitch-stretch battle going along. Giroux's got a strong hand ride. She gets away from this horse on the lead. She keeps on going. She was basically a ridden-out winner at Churchill Downs in her next start. And then the modesty handicap, she just went right to the front. I know she set an easy pace, but she was strong all the way to the wire. I was surprised she didn't run in the Beverly D, but she can win from on the lead. She can win from off. She's fast, and she's trained by Brad Cox. Yeah, and distance is no problem. There's just a lot to like about her. She's going to get a good trip in this race. I'm with you. I've been pretty taken by her three um, stateside starts and she's gotten here. And I think they found a really good spot here um, to step her up in class one more time. We saw the eight Quebec finish second to Twinette in that optional claiming race. The short comments has lacked room quarter pole to three sixteens. I don't think she wins with a clear run. I don't think she does either. She was going to be second. She finished second. It was a fine performance. Yeah, and she's a nice horse. I just think not exactly grade two class against this yeah. kind of horse. Elise's world's done very well for herself throughout her career for Chad Brown and now with Richard Baltus. She won the Santa Ana at a mile and a quarter. We saw her plugging along to finish fifth behind Vasilik and the Yellow Ribbon, but I think that mile and a sixteenth at this point in her career is a little short. Give her some pace, an extra sixteenth of a mile, she can get a piece of this. The pace scenario works to her advantage because she wants to run late. Uh, maybe it sets up the right way for her. She gets a clean run into it. She's another one. We've talked about her a lot. Yet. I'm not a big fan of hers, but she can get a piece of this. Meal ticket the tens 20 to 1 on the morning line, and she's got to prove her worth against graded foes. She was fourth in the maybe last year against Vasilika, and she got a great inside out trip and just couldn't make up the difference. Uh, last time out, though, at Del Mar, boy, this was the best I ever saw a meal ticket. She's on the far outside. And she just blows by these horses. If you believe the fig, and I know you, a lot of folks should question this figure because the 93, that's not what she's been running lately. She blew by this field. She's going to get pace. I don't know. I could use her. Yeah, I, I like this win from her too. Um, boy, she made a big run through the stretch and was just going away at the end. Can she do that against these horses? I don't know. It feels like the pace is going to be there for her. The pace is there for her, but she's not only have to beat one, she's got to beat yeah. maybe two or three or four good ones. But as we take a look at our top picks, I do want to highlight meal ticket for her performance in the last race. Maybe she's an unlikely winner, but she's a horse that I would use on the board in the uh, the maybe. She's my top selection. I, I don't dis I don't uh, have any problem with you picking her on top. She's going to be a big price in this race. I, I took Julia Foxtrot. I don't know what kind of price she's going to be, Dan. Um, but I think they found a good spot for her. I like her races. For, to me, it, it, it's her and Twinette for me. And I got to use Juliet Foxtrot as well. Uh, and Vasiliga, I think, is a yeah. horse that you got to respect. She just seems to show up every time. Keep an eye for LEZ's World also on the bottom of Exotic Wagers. She'll come running late. It's a fun race. The maybe we'll see if Juliet Foxtrot can make it four for four in North America for trainer Brad Cox. It's a talented bunch in the maybe. Bet it with a DRF Bets account. $100 deposit match is yours. DRF.com forward slash bet. Approximate post time for the maybe is 515 Pacific. Best of luck.